is it Boss that up. we do? And you're the people! And you're the people! What? The people. They want. What a weekend of action in the NFL and the NBA. Are Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers on bad teams? Maybe. Yep. Is LeBron James on a bad team? Yep. Maybe. And that's where we are boys. going to start the show with this shot. Look at the down and distance. Look at the time. Right? Look at that. You got 30 seconds on the shot clock. He's open from 16 feet, as Jalen would say, for a reason. He said he was going for a two for one, which doesn't make a ton of sense when you've got a one point lead in a tight game at home. Jalen, there's so much criticism put on Russell Westbrook that frankly, I don't think he deserves it all, but it is decisions like this, shots like that, that bring on the criticism. So they're now 0-3. What do you think about that shot and Russell Westbrook as a whole and this Laker team. like this, I wish raindrops would fall. That, that's how I feel. That, that's what LeBron was singing as he was walking back towards the huddle. And Jacoby, it's not just that the Lakers are 0-3. It's the ineptitude offensively and their inability in particular to A, make shots from three-point range, but also B, and you're not going to necessarily like this next point, it shows how their best players' numbers don't lead to winning. Mm. See, what happens in the league, Jacoby, when you start to get a little bit older, those stats may look, what did Anthony Davis have 20 and 10? LeBron, I believe, had 31, 8 and 8, right? But when you start to get a little older, this is why I don't love stats. Those ring hollow because they can't necessarily lead you for the 48 minutes. See, when you're younger, and the Joker and Ja and Luca are getting those stats, they lead to winning. And so what's going to happen with the Lakers now, yeah, we're going to show their bad shots and we're going to show these shots again because I want to make sure we take the time and breathe easy on this. Go back to the Russ play for a second. Now you're a future okay. Hall of Famer, you're a former MVP. You know that you're struggling to shoot the ball. And you know who I blame? I blame Nurkic. Look at the big fella. He with us. <laughs> he did, he he did this us. a few times in the game. He with us. He with us. Look at LeBron in the saying, corner. LeBron's you know like, what Jalen likes doing? to say? He with us. He was, hey, let me tell you something. The, the legendary Perry Watson once said in a huddle to one of the players that was complaining at Detroit Southwestern about being open and not getting the ball. And Perry Watson looked at that young man and he said, I love you, but I want to teach you something. You are open for a reason. And look at Russ on these clips. Like they're you leaving him wide open. You are open, young man, for a reason. And also AD shot, let's not ignore his off the backboard. And let's not ignore LeBron's shot that he shot from downtown LA and it landed before it even got to the arena. Like, that was like five feet short. Look at Nurkic. Oh, he with us. He didn't even guard AD. Like, he held the goose neck. He with him. us. He held it up like it was actually going in. At the side of the backboard, fam. You uh, know how I feel about air balls. Yeah, watch this one. But look at this one, man. There's like, levels to air balls. Get... There's levels to air balls. Like, he wasn't even close to close. Well, hold on. But you can't be shooting. You can't be playing against Dane, shooting from the logo, and coming up five feet short when he's torching y'all for 40. You know what I mean? Like, it... <laughs> hey, hey, man. The, the Lakers, they lost to two really good teams, and then they lost to Dame time. Mm -hmm. So far being 0-3. They'll be a play-in caliber team, Jacoby. But here's what's going to happen psychologically. LeBron, you know what? when they say that the, the most honest people in the room are little kids and elderly? Well, LeBron is elderly in basketball years. And he's not going to have much patience for this. Yeah. And then, he's not going to so, have much patience for this. One thing I do want to say is we talk about the Lakers so much because we are at ESPN, the national media. But like, let's not forget the fact that Dame Lillard had 41 points and was just absolutely killing, especially down the stretch. No, here's what we about to do. We're going to do one better. 
We about to get Dame on the show. See, I, I wasn't even talking about the Portland side. It was great to see Jeremy Grant. You know he put in work for my Pistons. Big you know I love him. Yeah. But it was great to see my guy Dame return. See, he one of the best players in the game, and he was out off last season. And he's also one of those guys, you ready for this? They win because they got him. Mm -hmm. See, remember, every year that the Blazers made the playoffs since Dame got there, he ain't played with another All-Star. CJ was All-Star caliber, clearly, but he didn't play with a most improved, a defensive player of the year, a, 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 a rookie of the year, like none of that. And so Dame's still at a point of his career, and this is what I mean, where his numbers and productivity, look down at the stat sheet, and didn't they only have like two or three people in double figures? Well, like, Jalen. We have to move on to another team that is also 0-3, and, and they're in a different conference. Let's talk about the Philadelphia 76ers. They lost to the Celtics and Bucks. Seemed like there was some bad body language after the, the Bucks game. Joel Embiid didn't speak to reporters. So they're definitely going to get right against the Spurs, right? They're definitely going to get right against the Spurs, right? Especially when Joel Embiid has 40 points. There's no chance they can lose to the Spurs, right, Jalen? Go, Spurs, go! And I want to make sure I say this out loud. The East has been a revolving door since LeBron left. Kawhi in Toronto, go on and win the championship. Jimmy Butler's first year in Miami, they win the East. Boston Celtics, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, they Bucks. win the East. The Bucks and Giannis win the East and win the championship. What happened to the Nets? And definitely what happened to the Sixers? Are they still processing? So hold on. You don't go and get an, the, the, the Avengers on paper with Daryl Morey, Doc Rivers, to go with Joel Embiid. You add James Harden. Tyrese Maxey is one of my favorite players in the game. He's the sky's the limit for him. And y'all 0-3? Mm-hmm. And, 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 and here's the other thing I want to make sure I say. If you play ball, you appreciate this, or even sports. Like, there are people that can run marathons that aren't necessarily good at running a sprint because they're two different exercises. And when you're watching basketball, in particular a guy like Luca, you'll hear people say that you can't speed him up. So what that means is he's going to play at his own pace, get to his spot, get his shot. James Harden's pace, Jacoby, is very ball dominant. And if you yeah. notice in those clips, and if you watch the game, when he has to play with pace, dribble handoff, run, catch and shoot, no dribbles. Turn the corner, go down the lane. When, he, when it has to be faster, that's when he's inefficient. When he can take his time, you, one, one of my favorite scorers growing up was Adrian Dantley. And he used to play for the Utah Jazz, and he used to get 30. And I used to love watching him play. AD would get that thing on the wing, and shout to him right now, doing a great job with the kids in the community. He'd get that thing and massage it, though, before he go into his move. And he came to the Pistons, he was still getting his buckets, but he was holding the ball too long. We traded him for Mark Aguirre, and we won the championship with the bad boys. James cool. Harden isn't used to playing with pace. I'm disappointed in the Sixers. They have too many veterans. And let me say this other thing. As I look deeper, deeper, deeper into the box score, whatever happened to Thibault? See, over the last couple of years, he elevated himself as an all-NBA defender and a valued asset. For me as an organization, you got to still continue to develop him into a rotation player. Not continue to diminish his minutes. He played three minutes. He played three minutes. You got five when minutes. You have, when you have James Harden and Maxi and Embiid on your team and you're Matisse Thibel, you need to play great defense and do what? Knock down threes. And I just feel like they don't trust him enough to knock down those open threes because we know what he can do on the defensive end. But I expect to see more of him because he's got to be there to contribute. And I expect the Sixers to get it right. I do not know if the Lakers will get it right. But two other football teams that need to get it right, the 
Buccaneers, led by Tom Brady, and the Packers, led by Aaron Rodgers. We'll discuss them in the NFL weekend right after this. Don't you are trouble, watching Jay McCaffrey, and they don't have their quarterback or their second street quarterback. There's, wait. They didn't just lose, Jalen. They got waxed. They scored three points in the entire game. Shout out to the Panthers, but Jalen, the Buccaneers are supposed to be better than this. So a couple of things I, I love and appreciate about you and this show is that we're going to cover every league, everything that's happening real time. And I appreciate how we put terms into the lexicon. And I noticed while we didn't invent the term waxed, we say it in the Beastie Boys voice, and I noticed that people are now saying it that way, and I appreciate it because that applies for this game. Do you feel like Tom Brady wish he were to retire? Yes, you know? and not only that, Shahid, yo, I mean, if you listen to page six, which is pretty accurate with its reporting, there's problems in his marriage over the fact that he's playing football and he's not even winning games. Like Tom Brady, there was punt, 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 punt. Missed field goal, punt, 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 field goal, punt, 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 punt. Like, there were so many punts in this game. I just could I kept waiting for the Bucs to come back. It just never happened. Possession David, possession. David Jacoby, when you and I are sitting at the MGM, and I got 20, and I split kings, what do you say? I'd, I'd say, Jalen, please don't do that. That's just a bad decision. I I'd really, I really, really just don't want you to do that just for the <laughs> vibes at the table, for your money, and just for life in general. And it sounds like that's what his better half was trying to tell him because <laughs> he overplayed his hand, fam. He got seven rings. And here's the other thing. My guy Tom Brady, the GOAT, fellow Michigan Wolverine, he also got a $300 million television deal waiting on him. Waiting for him. Come on, Tom. Like, like dog, you won. Don't split kings. Don't well, split kings. And, well, I'm going to remember, and, 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 I'm gonna remember you said don't split kings when we're actually playing blackjack. Well, and, and I'll, <laughs> what I'll happened say was, this about Tom Brady. He's like, I just kept waiting for them to move the ball, and they could not move it. And I felt the same way about the Green Bay Packers. When you have Aaron Rodgers, it just felt like week after week, he and his receivers are not on the same page. He throws a great deep ball and it goes off of someone's fingertips. You know what I mean? It just seems like they just can't make the connections that he seemed to easily make in the past. And they ended up losing to my guy, Heineke. I love Heineke so much and the commanders. But Jalen, I saw a frustrated Tom Brady and a frustrated Aaron Rodgers yesterday. Yes, sir, and I'm glad you tied them together because I want to tie the coaching job that Wilkes did with Carolina with the one Ron Rivera did with the Commanders. I want to salute both of them because so many times in sports, people underestimate just playing mistake-free puts you in position to win if you're playing hard. If you keep your penalties down, you keep your turnovers down, you value the possessions, and in this case, they bullied the Packers. How about number of plays they ran? They ran 72 plays. Mm. The Packers only ran 47. Mm. 72 plays. That, they was bullying them. And the receiving core, Aaron Rodgers either can't connect or don't trust, and some of those are bad throws. Aaron Jones ends up being the person that comes out of the backfield and catches two TDs for him. And also, I was thinking about something as I watched Kansas City yesterday. I'm happy for Juju reinventing himself, and I'm happy for Valdez Scantling. See, everybody talk about losing Devontae Adams. Yep. He yep. was a trusted receiver for Aaron Rodgers also. And so now when we watch them play, don't forget, Aaron Rodgers is the kind of player that has a stature with a franchise, ladies and gentlemen, that if he wants you on the roster, you gonna be on the roster. He got that LeBron James status with the team. So in other words, he didn't, he felt like without Adams, without Valdez Scantling, that they could still get it done. And what well, we're realizing, like we talk about with the Lakers, they can't get it done. And your guy Heineke, I love after Heineke throwing a so pick much. six, after throwing a pick six. He did six not look good in the surgical. first half. He was great surgical. in the second half. Jalen, we are on ESPN, but sometimes we become the only National Lions news.
Network. Meow. Mr. Los Angeles is very competitive out there for the Lions. For the first week of the season, I decided not to put any money on the Lions at any spread, no matter what. And I made a good decision because your guy, Jared Montana, didn't look very Montana-ish yesterday. Yeah, he looked like Montana that was throwing it to Everson Walls that was wearing cowboy colors on a bad day. And, and, and let me just tell you this, man. I, I got a little concussed watching this game and reminiscing about the days my guy Jared Montana and our Lions used to play on Thanksgiving Day. And you remember mm. the primetime game who we used to always play against? The Cowboys. The Cowboys. Yeah. And I remember rooting for my Lions and watching the Cowboys go up to the line of scrimmage, get into their three-point stand, stand up, look left and right, get back in their three points. I was like, that's cold! I was like, that's cold! And I was loving Tom Landry, and I loved all of the great stars they had. And then I'm like, wait a minute. They got a lot of stars, and we don't. And yeah. yesterday, after a bye week, now hold on, after a bye week, we're about to score a touchdown to take the lead fumble in the end zone mm -hmm. and don't challenge it don't don't challenge it the next what three or four possessions fumble turnover turnover fumble I, I, I'm concussed I don't even remember how the turnovers happened I just remember seeing Jared Montana in the pocket lose the ball get stripped fumble yeah, the yeah. ball and, over and, and over again. And, 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 and I, 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 I want to make sure I give the Cowboys credit, and it's good to see how hard Zeke is running. Like, yeah, I, he, I'm he, happy Zeke to see good. him running. It was great to see a Pollard run well also. And Prescott made some plays in the second half. Yep, Dak Prescott made a couple of crucial throws. He looked confident. You know, it, to be honest with you, when they started to – we started to turn the ball over – it seemed like the Cowboys treated it like a scrimmage and an opportunity to warm up and get ready for bigger opponents. They got bigger fish to fry. So I'm, I'm just hurt and heartbroken for my Lions. But guess what? Jalen and Jacoby going to still be at the game That's right. this Sunday when they play against Tua, Tyreek, and the Miami Dolphins. And we're going to bring them there. They won the first game I was at. You know you they beat go, the commanders. You can I was go at to DetroitLions.com slash Jalen and Jacoby and join us in Detroit before the game. You get a package that comes with a ticket to the live podcast and a ticket to the game, and it's under $100. Jalen, let's move on very quickly and recognize the Chiefs. The San Francisco 49ers have a great defense, and they've got a great coach, and they added Christian McCaffrey. They've got all this momentum coming into the game, but guess what? Patrick Mahomes is still Patrick Mahomes. Doesn't matter what Where defense he's playing. Me. Doesn't matter what defense he's playing against. He's just going to slice you up, and he did it again me. yesterday. Classic Chiefs performance, just outscoring everybody. And when and when you hold Travis Kelsey under 100 yards and he's not catching four TDs, you should win if he has none. Except Patrick Mahomes is spreading the ball around, as I mentioned, to Juju and Valdez Scantling. And I appreciated that because he's my fantasy quarterback and they started off losing and before you know it explosive Hardman mm -hmm. couple of touchdowns Three spreading the football Hardman. around and it was great to watch how they dismantled the 49ers I, I figured the 49ers would struggle because when you get a new shiny toy that's such a great player like Christian McCaffrey you're tempted to try to get him involved you don't know how to get him involved and you're trying to still figure it out, but I think the 49ers will respond, and they'll still be one of the best teams in the NFC. Yeah, I agree. The NFC this year in particular, it seems like the 49ers are one of the best teams. Maybe we'll get back to the NFC Championship, and we'll get back to giving you more from this. Every single day we have this program, what do we do? Sadly, we acknowledge that Brittany Griner is still wrongfully detained. 249 days, and I'm disappointed at this point that we're the only show that talks about this. When everybody gets a chance, look down at social media, look at the television screen. It ain't at the bottom of the ticker. It ain't a part of the sports story. It ain't a part of politics. It ain't a part of news. And it's sad that no one is talking about this, but we here at Jalen and Jacoby are gonna make sure we acknowledge and hope that she, and wish for her to have a speedy, safe return to the United States. Absolutely. Every Monday, I wake up in the morning and I'm like, 
Are the Giants a good football team? Because I think the Giants might be a good football team. Another very gianty win down at the half and then run the ball with Saquon, Danny Dimes, throwing dimes and running again and again, over 200 in the air, 100 on the ground. Jalen, they beat the Jaguars, they beat good teams, they beat bad teams. I think the Giants are good. And as this game was happening, I was thinking, if the Jaguars win this game, the Giants are who I thought they was. But since the Giants won this game, they're better than I thought they was. And I'm good. It's, it's glad to see their head coach, Brian Dable, in the parking lot with the victory cigar. I love Brian Dable so much. Make sure you listen to our podcast where we cover the rest of week's